Hello and welcome to a game called Invisible and this is an interactive narrative about being homeless in Montreal or Montreal for those of us that live south of the border and I apologize for the music it is so loud so I don't know what that's going to do during the game but um, hopefully uh, everything will be okay I don't know I've not played the game before, I was just poking around and found this over on itch.io. I'll leave a link to the description, I'll leave a link to the game in the description, you know how this works. <laughs> anyway, you are homeless, lost, alone, with no money left. Those people are just lazy. They just need to get a job, they said. And you used to think. You have to do something. You have to prove that you are better. You need to change your future. You are so hungry, but there's no time to dwell on that. It's time for action. You don't know much about the city. However, you can speak English and still have all your limbs. Okay, good to know. How hard can it be to find a job? You can... Oh, my camera's going to be in the way. Okay, well, not really much I can do about that, I'm afraid. Um, I can try to find a job in the field I previously worked in. You can find a resource center, or you can test your luck with convenience stores and small restaurants near you. All right, well, let's try the field I used to work in. You realize that you don't know where to go or how to find a company in the field you used to work in. Okay, even if you did know, you figure that you have no way of getting there without a bus pass. Okay. Find a resource center. I have no idea where a resource center would be, but you have no idea where the nearest resources center is. That's what I was just saying. Uh, you have no one to ask for help, and you don't know where to start. All right, so basically, I'm being forced down a path. So, not a fan of that. You know, each of these should have been a different direction to go. I mean, you know, seriously, but okay. So, we're going to test our luck with convenience stores and small restaurants near us. Hi, are you hiring? No, sorry. But the... We are full on staff. But... You eventually get used to the alarmed look on the cashier's face. You eventually mute the worried glances and hushed voices. But the sign in front of their store still bothers you because it says... Now hiring. We are looking to add new members to our team. For more information, call this number. Try again. You walk into a family restaurant and immediately a waiter comes towards you. In a low pressing tone, he says to you, On est bien pas vous savez ici. Forgive my French, it's been a long time since I've spoken French. Probably seeing your confusion, he adds, We can't serve you here. Please leave. In any other time, you would have yelled angrily at him to defend yourself. Hunger must be playing with your mind, because looking down at your hands and clothes, you somehow understand why they won't serve you. You do look horrible. So I can try again, or I can do something else. Um, I don't know. Let's try something else. You decide you should satisfy your hungry, hunger, and you need some change to buy food. So I can panhandle, or I can write a cardboard sign and wait. Well, let's make a cardboard sign. After digging into the recycle bin, you find an unsoiled cardboard. Your own hands and coat are dirty and reek of spoiled food. Who threw a pizza box in there? But you have nowhere to go to clean yourself up. And so you write either Homeless and hungry, anything helps, God bless you. Lost job, hungry, or ninja killed my family, need money for revenge. <laughs> Alright, that's what I'm writing. I, I know, it's, it's ridiculous, right? That's what I'm writing. A lot of people are taking the metro today. Why do you feel so invisible? I wait. But is any one of them reading your sign? How embarrassing. I don't know, can I wait some more? Uh-oh. 
There's no one approaching you because you smell bad. Okay, let's do something else. You figure that panhandling, although humiliating, is the quickest way to get enough money to buy food. Hi, excuse me. Oh, or I could say any spare change. This is so loud. Oh my gosh. All right, I apologize. Ooh, my heavens. All right. Um, I'm going to say, hi, excuse me. The lady refuses to acknowledge your existence as she walks by you. Some change for me to buy food. Anything will help. And all of a sudden, there's no sound. <laughs> What's his problem looking at you as if you are the scum of the earth? Any spare change? Some change for me to buy food. How about some change for me to buy food? Okay. All you want is some food and a bed to sleep on. I guess we'll do something else. After digging in the recycle bin, you find an unsoiled cardboard. Your own hands and coat are dirty. Oh, oh, I'm starting all the way. Okay. So let's do um, Lost Job, Hungary. Lots of people are taking the metro. Anyone reading the sign? How embarrassing. No one's approaching you because you smell bad. Wait, what? The woman bending down to give you a few coins startles you. She gives you a tight-lipped, almost apologetic smile. You want to tell her that it's okay, that it's not her fault, but all you manage to say is, thank you. Maybe you should keep waiting, okay? You have waited for a long morning and you are emotionally exhausted. Despite not wanting to feel this way, you end up thinking that maybe, just maybe, this is what you deserve. You manage to earn $3.71. And now it's raining. To escape the rain, you decide to stop what you were doing and head indoors to buy food. Both a fast food restaurant and a supermarket are within your walking limit. You decide to go to the supermarket or the fast food restaurant. Um, I could probably get more for my money through the supermarket. There's no question that the food you can get at the supermarket comes in bigger quantity and cheaper price than fast food restaurants. Some items are on sale today. What should you buy? Oh, okay, so I can buy oatmeal and banana. It's cheap and healthy. I can buy bread and cheese, which is a good source of energy. I can buy meat, which is essential for survival. Or I can buy rice that you can last for a few days. I think I'm going to go with rice. I mean, that gives me a few days that maybe I can get some more money. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with rice. Are you crazy? You can't cook it. And starting a fire would probably end up you in jail. That was very stupid of you. Wow, that's encouraging. Great. Um, I guess I'll go with bread and cheese. The block of cheddar cheese and the bread proved to be a very satisfying lunch for you. You now simply have to store the rest of the cheese in the fridge and the bread somewhere dry. All you have for storage is your damp backpack. I was like, I don't have a fridge. Eventually you have to choose between a stomach ache and throwing the food out. It's now late afternoon. It's not raining anymore. You're tired and you feel quite lightheaded. Maybe if you lie down and rest a little, you'll feel better. You choose a bench in a rather deserted park to lie down knowing in the back of your mind that you need to keep a low profile to avoid trouble. It's cold and wet, but you can live with that, and you doze off. Is somebody going to steal my cheese? Are they going to steal my cheese? Yeah, they're going through my stuff. Hey! Oh. Used coat and a faint smell of alcohol. The man who woke you up is likely homeless just like you. In fact, you probably have been sleeping on his usual bench. Sorry. Oh, is he mad at you? Apologize and tries to reason with a stranger or leave immediately. I'm going to apologize. Sorry, I... You are new in the area, aren't you? The question is friendly and understanding. As you nod to answer, the stranger takes a seat next to you. It's fine, man. I know how it feels. Hate to break it to you, but it doesn't get much easier. 
Hey, I can show you around here, though. He is chuckling at your general lack of reaction. Hey, I'm not going to mug you. You probably don't have anything valuable anyway. I do got cheese. The corners of your mouth turn up slightly. Looking at the stranger, you realize he must be younger than he looks. He must be younger than he looks. He is friendly, and you can't help but feel more comfortable around him. To let you rest, the stranger moves to the bench opposite to you. Before lying down, the stranger says, Oh, and meet Ruby, and call me Spike, and doze off. Oh, he's barking. To your relief, you open your eyes and you see a man in uniform with a badge on the sleeve saying Police Montreal. Cops are friends, you reason. They protect and serve after all. I'm going to guess probably not. The police officer is saying something in French that you cannot understand and he sounds impatient. He then shoves a piece of paper into your chest. It's a fine. The officer is long gone when you finally look down at your fine. $144 for usage incorrect d'installation publique. Great. Is the cop expecting you to pay this amount when you can barely have enough money to buy food? This is plain ridiculous. Yet, on the other bench, you hear Spike sigh and murmur something about being lucky this time. You must be dreaming. Pinch yourself to wake up. You are not dreaming. Spike tells you that he has encountered far worse agents of control and mentions that he has has seen many being threatened or physically harassed. To make a point, he takes out from his pocket the fines he has received. A fine says, wanderingly, wandering aimlessly on the streets. Another states, stepping on the grass. Another says, having thrown paper on the ground. Spike tells you with a laugh that said paper is, in fact, another fine that he had received. These add up to thousands of dollars. You don't know what to say, so you offer him some of your food, and the two of you munch on it until it is starting to get dark. Spike tells you that nighttime is dangerous for a homeless person, but he offers no explanation as to why. And in any case, you have to move somewhere safe before you receive another ticket for unlawful stay in a park after closing you have two options. Follow Spike to his usual hideout and sleep rough, or go to the nearest shelter to pass the night. Spike can show you the way, but will not go with you since dogs are not allowed. Um, wow. I, I think I'm going to go with Spike. You decide to trust Spike and go with him. He leads you to a rather isolated tunnel that will protect you against the wind. As you approach the tunnel, you can hear laughter and chatter. You meet Spike's friends, all smiling, all coping with their situation in their own ways. Some take drugs to give themselves a routine. Others chat all day long to chase away the boredom. The ground is hard and cold, and you find yourself tossing and turning all night, trying to get some rest. And so... Scared and tired, invisible to the world, you set to survive yet another day. Congratulations, you have survived today. The end. Wow. Over 235,000 Canadians experience homelessness in a year. You can change that. Interactive story by that person based on real events. And there's a place you can help out raising the roof. Shea Toy. Toy. La Fondation des Auberges de Cour. The Homeless Hub. All right. So there you go. There it is. It was invisible. Got any questions, problems, suggestions, horror stories? Want to talk about it? Feel free to discuss in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.